at what point should an innocent person of goodwill send defensive rounds into a rampage-style active shooter, stopping him from murdering innocents? Hey guys, retired Lieutenant Todd Heaton here with Humilitas first. Could you stop him right here? Is you see the firearm in his hand? Or should you wait until he's actually committing an assault by raising his firearm to point it at an innocent person? Or should you wait until he pulls the trigger and you hear a click, as purportedly happened in this case, or a boom, which is going to be the battery, the gunshot wound, and perhaps the first unjust murder? So what's the point you're going to ready up and shoot and why? People focus primarily on shooting skills, weapon handling and shooting skills, as well they should. But I'm telling you, there is something that is just as important that most people neglect, and that's the legal battlefield. In law enforcement, I spent just about as much time focused on becoming a craftsman at the legal battlefield. Why? A failure to understand that battlefield means a much higher risk of losing your freedoms, losing your liberty and pursuit of happiness. There's one source that I recommend to all of my family, my friends, and my clients. And I recommend him because he's a craftsman, attorney Andrew Bronca. He's done the work. You become a craftsman by doing the work. He has a book called The Law of Self-Defense. It's a great starting point. He has a YouTube channel where he breaks down cases, including videos, and provides for you the underlying fundamental principles of the legal battlefield. Just subscribe to his channel. This isn't legal advice. I'm not an attorney. You need to do the work to understand the legal battlefield. This is just a retired police lieutenant sharing with you how I was trained and why as it relates to dealing with the rampage active shooter. Why do I say rampage? Because today, folks on the left, they like to lump in under the umbrella of the title mass shootings, gang crimes, and domestic crimes, which are radically different problems. The Catholic Mass, it's very well organized, and things like timing and positioning, they're very predictable. I know precisely at what point a lector is going to approach the sanctuary to read the first and second readings. The sanctuary, it's this front part of the church which the lector ascends the steps to where you find the priest, deacons, and altar servers are already positioned. So if some guy approaches the sanctuary outside of the normal positioning and timing, then I know it's time to look at his hands. That's the first thing I'm going to look for. I'm going to look at his hands. Does he have a firearm in his hands? Does he have a knife in his hands? I'm also going to be watching for the draw from the waistline. Why? At some point prior to this, the unjust aggressor here, he drew his pistol from concealment. When you hear the words situational awareness, well, a draw of a pistol from concealment, that's absolutely need to know as it relates to things to be aware of. Look, you got to know your statutes. You do the work to know your statutes. Know the relevant case law, which defines the statute for your particular state. Or just go get Attorney Andrew Bronca's book. Read it. Then read it again. But at this point, this is a defense of others. The pastor. My law enforcement training taught me that I should respond to the threat, not waiting for the assault, the raising, and the pointing of the firearm. Why? Because action beats reaction. That's a principle. So you respond to the threat, juxtaposed to the assault, or even worse, the click or the bang. This is the threat. The facts here. This bad guy, he's looking at what he wants. What does he want? He wants the pastor. He's moving closer to what he wants, the pastor. And at some point prior to this, he filled his hand with his firearm. Those facts contribute to what's called the totality of the circumstances. This is a well-known concept in law enforcement circles. And it also applies to civilian use of legitimate self-defense. The totality of the circumstances. It has much to do with whether or not your use of force is considered objectively reasonable under those circumstances, under those facts just mentioned. Look, if this setting was a gun range, gun store, or a gun show, then a defensive use would be unreasonable. Lots of people visiting the gun range, store, or show are going to be holding a firearm in their hand. They might be moving around with it as well. 
However, in this particular setting, it's unreasonable for members of this worship service to be drawing or holding a firearm in their hand. Are active shooter events something that can happen anywhere at any time in 2024? Yes, of course. A caveat to this is, of course, context matters. So, if an innocent concealed carry holder was to ready up to stop this imminent threat, hopefully we were paying attention and we saw that something odd was developing. Hopefully we can see, oh, that guy approaching the pastor, he has a gun in his hand. Because we don't want to shoot an innocent concealed carry guy or gal who's trying to stop an unjust aggressor. We want to get this right. When we look at the bad guy in this case, well, what's he doing? Do we see a badge on this guy? Is he part of law enforcement? No, he's not. Who's he looking at? Oh, he's looking at the pastor whose hands are empty. So he's not a threat. So you got to pay attention. You want to pick up on things outside the baseline sooner, earlier during the spin up to violence. This is a threat. This is an assault. And when we get to the click, or the bang, well, that's the battery. That's the gunshot wound, the casualty, or the unjust homicide. So relating to the how I was trained, is my background clear? Yes. Is this an imminent threat of great bodily harm or death? Yes. So, ready up. Start sending fast and accurate defensive rounds to incapacitate, thereby stopping the threat. That's the how. But you have to be paying attention to catch any of this.